What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today then, I wanted to discuss with you the kind of products you should be selling when you're drop shipping, or more specifically then, the kind of price range you should be selling your products in. So I've been talking to a lot of you guys now through the one-to-one -one calls. I've been giving away a call on every single video for quite a while now. Um, so if you do wanna enter the one on this video, by the way, make sure you like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on yesterday's video, then just make sure you stay tuned to the end where the winner will be announced. So I've been talking to a lot of you guys then through the one-to-one -one calls and everybody seems to be selling the same kind of products in the same kind of price bracket or at least products in the same price bracket. Um, and, and the kind of price bracket I'm talking about then is under 20 pounds. Now, in my opinion, the products can work, but I think you're really gonna struggle to, to sell them profitably um, for a sustainable amount of time. So when I first started dropshipping then, I sold really cheap products. They were in kind of like the five, 10, 15 pound range. And within six months then, I soon became, it soon became really difficult to sell those same products um, and make a profit essentially. And it wasn't until I started selling products a bit more expensive than that, that I was able to actually build something that was sustainable and profitable. So in this video then, I just wanna take through kind of like the pros and cons of selling cheap products versus products a bit more expensive. So when I say low ticket items then, I typically think of products kind of less than 30 pounds. And then high ticket for this video is just gonna be anything above that, so 30 pounds plus. So that's the topic of the video then. We're just gonna be going through the pros and cons and I'm just gonna be showing you some products examples as well. Um, just so I don't leave you kind of high and dry. Um, it's one thing to tell you to sell more expensive items, but unless you know the kind of items I'm talking about, um, then it's not really gonna help you much. So I'm gonna be just showing you some products examples as well. So that being said then guys, that's the topic of the video. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I've got my phone in front of me then. We're just gonna be working through some notes. Um, and one quick point I want to mention then is that dropshipping has evolved a lot since I started three years ago. So I've kind of had first-hand experience at how things have changed, or at least not dropshipping actually. When I say dropshipping, um, I really mean Facebook ads. So Facebook ads have just got a lot more competitive um, and therefore a lot more expensive. And the market changes, so people react to different kind of ads, different kind of products. Um, and unless you adapt to those changes, then you're just going to be left behind. So. Everything I talk about in this video then is current for now um, in comparison to what it used to be. So high ticket versus low ticket then. I'm going to start with high ticket because in my opinion, it's a lot easier to make money. But there are still some cons that you need to be aware of. And if you're brand new to marketing, then it may not be the easiest thing for you, which again, I'm going to go through. So obviously the biggest thing then with high ticket items is there are bigger profit margins. So if you sell products such as drones, you can buy a drone, a pretty decent one now on AliExpress for about 20, 30 pounds. And you could probably sell that on Facebook um, through Facebook ads for double that, if not triple that. So you're looking at maybe 60 pounds profit margin per per sale minus your Facebook marketing costs. And if you just compare that to a low ticket item, so um, the other day I was looking at somebody's store and they were selling like animal jewelry um, and they would leave in kind of like a, a range of anywhere up to about seven pound per purchase if they were to make a profit. And that didn't take into account anything else like um, the Shopify subscription plan or um, any app costs or anything like that. So at any time you can increase that margin for your marketing costs, then um, it's only going to pay dividends in the future because a good business is a profitable business. So the more profit you can make, then the more healthy your business is going to be. So second thing as well is that you don't have to sell as many items to make as much money. So if you're selling a high ticket item with 60 pound profit margin, you'd have to sell say 10 low ticket items to make the same amount of money if you're making six pound per item. And that's going to be a good thing as well for your business because Number one, there's gonna be less amount of returns, there's gonna be less problems to deal with, less customers to deal with, and less orders to fulfill. Um, so it, ultimately, it's just gonna be a more slick and efficient business to run, which is, again, is always a good thing and a good sign of a healthy business. But then kind of on the flip side of that as well, because I do wanna make you aware of the pros and cons, um, is that if you do get a return, then it's gonna have a bigger impact on your business, especially if you're trying to do it with a lower budget. So if your budget is say 300 pounds and you're selling an item that is a cost to you of 30 pounds, then obviously if somebody wants to return that and they want their money back, then that's a lot you have to refund the customer if you're selling it for 100 pounds, plus that's kind of like a 30 pound 
cost that you may have to absorb if your supplier isn't willing to absorb it themselves. And that kind of leads me onto the next point, which is if you're selling more expensive items, then making sure you have a good supplier is key because any any return is a significant impact on your business. So this is where key a good supplier will pay off because items aren't going to go missing in the post. Um, any damages the a decent supplier will deal with with returns etc those sorts of things so basically when it comes to selling high ticket items you can't just go with any old supplier you have to vet them out and the longer they've been in business the better reviews the more the quicker they return uh, messages things like that just make sure you go with a really good supplier and then the final point as well is that when you're selling high ticket items then you need a decent website you need decent social media profiles um, and you need a decent following as well because i don't know about you guys but i certainly wouldn't be willing to spend like a hundred pound plus with somebody who had zero followers on social media or zero reviews or if they had spelling mistakes on their store or if the layout wasn't kind of all in line or if they had pixelated images just anything like that Basically, the more expensive your items are, then the more professional your website has to be. And you only have to go out and do a bit of research online to see that. So if you go and look at, say, Rolex's website and then compare that to a cheaper brand like Casio's, then the Rolex website is just so much more professional and just kind of it looks more expensive and so it should because obviously rolex watches are a lot more expensive and it's the same reason same kind of principle um, if you're selling more expensive items then you need a more professional slick and decent looking website so moving on to low ticket items then so typically anything under about 20 30 pound um, now there's a lot to be said for these because as a new marketer, somebody going into Facebook ads and advertising products and low ticket is definitely easier because it's there's a lot, there's less check boxes you have to tick to get somebody to spend say 15 pounds than you do to get them to spend a hundred pounds. So when it comes to things like designing your store, putting a store together, product images, um, creating Facebook ads um, and social media profiles, then it's a lot easier and quicker to do when selling low ticket items so the number one pro then obviously is they're easier to sell so for a newbie then it can be definitely a more favorable way but however at the end of this video then i am going to give my strategy on or at least my advice to what i would suggest a newbie do and what kind of what kind of approach they would have would they sell high ticket or should they sell low ticket so moving on then the pros and cons are kind of like pretty much the opposite to high ticket so returns aren't as important because they're not as expensive you're talking maybe one two three anywhere up to kind of five pounds per cost of the product um, and then on the flip side against high ticket there's going to be more customers to deal with uh, more potential problems if you're shipping out 100 items versus 10 items then the chances are there's going to be more problems to deal with with those 100 items um, and then kind of what I've already mentioned is that it's an easier route for less experienced marketers um, and also you can get away with having a less professional looking store so they're kind of like the pros and cons of high ticket and low ticket in terms of my strategy or advice to new marketers people new to shopify new to facebook i would suggest then that you start in the price range of anywhere between kind of 30 and 40 pounds maybe even 25 so let's say 25 to 40 pounds because what this is going to do then is this you can find when it comes to selling products then it's all about perceived value and what i mean by that is that you can find pretty decent items on aliexpress that are a cost to you is going to be about five pounds but then the perceived value is probably well within that price range so anywhere between 25 and 40 pounds and that's going to leave you plenty of room so anywhere between kind of like 20 and 35 pounds cost per purchase so even if you do achieve a cost per purchase of those kind of high numbers then it's still going to leave room for you to at least get your money back so you can continue advertising and continue putting more money into your business so one thing i always say to people on a call is that when going into any business a business is a marathon not a sprint so don't be in a rush and um, be in a hurry but never be in a rush because if you try and rush things too quickly then you're going to make mistakes you're going to cut corners and you're going to be too eager and you're going to overlook things so just don't be in a rush so to finish off my strategy then or advice towards beginners choose products that you can sell anywhere between kind of 25 and 40 pounds and make sure you choose a quality product so 
What I mean by this then is it comes back to that whole perceived value. So I'll put some pop-ups on the screen now of like low ticket kind of cheap items that you wouldn't be able to sell for anything more than 20 pounds just because people look at them and they know or what to expect from it and they know I have a figure in the head of what they would pay for something like this and you've only got to look at the items and people aren't stupid even if they love an item if they feel like they're being ripped off then all they're going to do is go somewhere else um, to buy it so you may have heard me talk about impulse buy products um, on this channel before and 25 to 40 pound definitely falls within that category and as long as you make sure you tick all the right boxes for your customer they're not going to go elsewhere and try and find it somewhere else so as long as you have a decent store and the product is priced correctly and there's decent images to make sure it looks like it should match the price you're selling it for then you'll be good to go so in terms of cheap low ticket items then um, you've just seen the ones that I would would recommend you stay away from just because people know if somebody can price it by looking at it then you can get you can get away less with how expensive you price it if that makes sense so for example then these cat earrings now I'll put them pop up on the screen um, somebody could look at that and they know they're plastic they know they're cheap and cheerful so you try and sell those for anything more than 20 pound probably 15 pound people are going to know they're going to be ripped off and it's the kind of products because it's so easily identifiable they could just go on google and search cat earrings and the chances are um, it'll be one of the first few pop-ups that they see so choose some more quality products then and what i mean by quality products is products like these ones that are on the screen now so ones that people know that a lot of thought goes into them a lot of design um, they make an impact on somebody's life um, so they make somebody's life a lot easier or if it saves them money um, things that people are going to be willing to pay a decent amount of money for and in return it's just going to be easier to market because you're going to have that room for that extra marketing cost so another thing then i recommend to people when i talk to them is that try and find something that people try and find a product that people know is really expensive so 4k action cameras and everybody knows of gopro and everybody knows you're looking at probably like a few hundred quid for a gopro camera whereas you can go on aliexpress find something that will do more or less the exact same thing for a fraction of the price so they can see something that they've always wanted that's hundreds of pounds but then if they see your ad that's essentially doing the same thing as a gopro but they can get it for a tenth of the price so you can find pretty decent action cameras now on aliexpress for like 40 pounds then that's going to be a huge thing in the customer's eyes and that's going to that's going to be really attractive to them because they know it's an expensive product so they expect to pay quite a lot for it but because it's so much less than what they actually thought so in comparison to a gopro then they'd still be willing to pay say up to 100 pounds if that makes sense any questions at all on any of this by the way and um, then feel free to leave a comment down below and then kind of like one final point then to finish off this video so 25 to 40 pounds is the range i would suggest starting in choose a quality product like the ones we've just discussed and then once you get a bit more experience behind you once you've started dabbling with facebook ads and you start to understand them you start to gauge um, and just grasp an understanding of how essentially people re will react to different products then start moving into the more expensive ones once you've spent a bit more money on your store maybe paid for a decent theme um, and you've got something really professional and good going and then start moving into the more expensive products so like anything that's kind of 60 70 80 even 100 pounds plus and that being said then guys that covers all the points i wanted to go through on my phone if you're still watching thank you very much um hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did all i ask then is please do leave a like and if you wanted to be entered into the raffle to win the one-to-one -one call then just make sure you leave a comment down below as well and that being said then guys let's get into announcing the winner of yesterday's video here we are then guys on my previous video so if you do want to learn a strategy i use for retargeting ads and um, then just make sure you go back and check it out so I'm just going to take the URL then here at the top, head over to the random comment picker URL in there, get YouTube comments, um, and let's start the raffle then, see who the winner is going to be this time. So the winner of the previous video then is Stephen. Um, these are the type of videos we love. Facebook is the number one thing we most struggle with. Um, so I hear you, loads of people tell me that same thing. So I've got loads of content coming on that. Um, so make sure you reach out then. Instagram is definitely the best place. Send me a DM and we can get that call arranged. 
So that being said, guys, that's the end of the video. Um, if you'd rather just book a call and get straight to it, then there is a link down below in the video description. Um, and that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next one.